Yeah. Well, listen, Dennis, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate your time. I'm excited to talk to you. We've trained together. Yeah. You've trained me. You've taught me heaps of things. So I'm looking forward to having a chat with you. So thanks for coming. Oh, thanks for inviting me on, Robbie. I'm not, I'm not like a big food expert, so I don't know how much, <laughs> uh, how much use I'm going to be on here. Well, but. look, I, find it's, I think it's going to be interesting because I, I, I'm very, I, I love combat sports. Obviously, you love combat sports. And I just think that there's been a big change in that industry. And I'd like to get into that. But I yeah. always start off, first of all, is what is your very first food memory? Oh, very first food memory. Um, I don't know, actually. Like, I, I remember what's funny is when I, when I was a kid, I didn't like to eat much. And my parents had to, like, you know, they, yeah, like, uh, yeah, they had to force me to eat. Really? And well, then I any think, food at all? Yeah, I don't know. I think I like chips. But then any, <laughs> anything, anything apart from that, yeah, I didn't really I love always. chips. Yeah, I yeah. just remember, like, the, you know, them having to force me to eat. Um, yeah. So would you, would you say it was chips? That's your first food, maybe? Yeah, yeah, probably. Say? Yeah, like I think chippy or off your mum would. No, no, nah, nah, my mum. Yeah, we would never like that's like I don't really remember us ever getting takeaway food like no. throughout our whole uh, childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was your your mum would just be cooking, or was it mum and dad? Or was no, nah, no, it was always school? my mum. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, my mum was cooking same, all the time. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And was she a good cook? Is she an Irish lady? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. She was really good. Yeah, like she used to make every meal, especially like probably the biggest one was um, Sunday dinner was the yeah. big one, like Sunday roast. Love a Sunday um, roast. Yeah, it's massive over England. And yeah, Ireland, yeah. Kind of Wales. Yeah, kind of thing. and I've never really like had you know any other Sunday roasts that are as good as that. <laughs> uh. And would you have multiple kinds of potato? Would you have like? See, we would normally have like a mashed potato and a roast potato. Yeah, yeah, we would have that. Yeah, mashed potato, roast potato. Yeah, like yeah. potatoes are obviously like the big thing. But that was actually the thing that I didn't used to like eat, to eat when I was really young. Potatoes. And it, yeah, yeah, because that was like the main, you know, the main food source. <laughs> like, you've got a huge pile of potatoes and, and I'm like of forcing it into <laughs> yes. me. Yeah. Eat the potato, eat yeah. the potato. It'll fill you up. My mum used to tell stories about she used to have to have before she was one of six. And she would have to have a slice of bread and a glass of water before dinner every night. Oh, really? Oh, because okay. That would, you, fill you up fill a little bit. Up. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, is your mum from Donegal as no, well? No, no. My auntie, my, my, my nana's brother, so my great, whatever that is, my great uncle, my nana's brother, his wife is from Donegal. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I knew you had, Donegal a few yeah, times. Yeah. yeah, I remember you had some Love kind it. of connection. Loved it. Yeah. It was, what a place. But I, do yeah. you have like ancestors that are from somewhere else in Ireland or? All? No, no, that was it. So it was just, well, uh, second cousins or oh, whatever, okay. whatever yeah. that would be. Yeah. Craig, well, he's, he's Craig and whatever, he, he's got a brother. And then they've got kids and some of them are builders, but not really. I've got family there, but not really. But Beck's um, partner, uh, her, her whole family is from, because Beck's from Liverpool, my wife's from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. And her partner and her sister's partner, all her family are from, from Ireland. Oh, okay. There's quite a lot of Irish now in Liverpool. Well, yeah, in yeah. Well, I think there's always been, I think Liverpool's yeah. always been like the big kind of Irish place. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, to go for sure. Yeah. And so, he, I think like northeast, all of, like all the parts of the north of England, there's yeah, a lot of Irish cheaper, ancestors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think a lot of them went to like work in mines and stuff like yeah, 100, yeah, a lot of labouring, 200 yeah, yeah, years ago. So, yeah. Durham and all that coast there. Like yeah. You say, a lot of mining towns, pit villages, all these kind of things. Yeah. But like you say, it's funny that. that it's a classic example of what food being a, you know, obviously using bread and water to fill you up before you have the meal, right? Yeah. But you're an expert. You're an ex-professional fighter, is that? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. And what kind of role did food play in that? Uh well, I mean. Like, obviously, when you're fighting, you have to be, um, like, a bit more careful with what you eat and stuff. Yeah. But I would say, like, I was never, I was never overly, overly, um, you know, careful with it. Like, I was, I just tended to, like, just eat with, like, I actually remember, you know, because I had most of my fights when I was living in the UK. Oh, did you? Yeah. So, I, I had it. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I don't, so all, all together, like kind of professional, you know, it's kind of, the, the definition has changed over time, but like what, what you could say are professional MMA fights, I had about 16 of them, yeah. and it was over the, you know, I had my first one probably, when was that, 2002, I think, 2002, 2003, um, and then I was in England up until um, 2007. So I probably had like, you know, eight of them when I was over there. I had yeah. one at Italy as well. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, did you win? 
Yeah, yeah, I won the one. That was my, I lost my first fight, which was up in Birmingham, and then I had my second fight in Italy, and I, I lost the one in Birmingham, but I won the one in Italy. Yeah. But I mean, th yeah, like going back to the food thing, like, you know, it sounds strange now, but like, there was no real, um, some of the times I didn't even know what weight my opponent was going to be. So you would just turn up, like, for example, the fight in Italy, we just like flew to Italy in the morning. Got to the, the venue. Of the fight. Yeah, yeah. Or like, not. It, we left in the morning, got there middle of the afternoon, and I didn't actually know who I was fighting until Jesus. we both got into the ring. So we did like, I think I did a weigh in, and then the promoter just said, "Yeah, that's okay." <laughs> but then we didn't really know who I was fighting. So were you the bigger guy? Or the, the nah, he was probably a bit bigger than it? me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, but I mean, like, I think in some ways it's the way I looked at it. It was um. It's kind of good because when you're not worrying too much about what weight do I have to be, you know, is the guy going to be like half a kilo heavier than me? And yeah, you just yeah. focus on the training and fighting instead. It's like yeah. less to worry about, I think. Yeah. And so you, you would you would never have like a whilst you're in camp or anything like that, you would never you'd never have like, you know, a restricted diet or what you ne that would never really come to you then. But then. Uh, not not so much in the earlier fights, yeah, yeah. just like just like in the you know towards the later ones once i started you know how, like fighting you know slightly more experienced people then you know you'd need to try to get to a certain weight and yeah, yeah. but i mean like i remember in the when i was training in london like uh i'd be working all day go to training for like a few hours in the evening and then like on the way home i would like get a kebab from the like that would be my dinner in the evening just yeah, to eat a yeah. kebab and then like it's a lot of people right? yeah yeah because i mean I, I suppose when you're younger as well as like you know uh mid-20s so it doesn't really have that much effect and you still wake up the next morning feeling fine so yeah yeah for sure yeah. and would you ever have a, a meal that you'd have like afterwards you know like or would you go for beers or would you, like if you won or if you lost or whatever would you you know would you want to go for a pizza or not is it, was that a tradition that you ever did or not um not like really? after after yeah, the after, fights yeah yeah yeah, fights. yeah like, like ice cream or whatever big chocolate sundae or something yeah well i mean i think i think yeah you would always like because it's such a big um experience that you would you know you'd always want to go out and like eat something yeah. afterwards but i remember so many times as well you know because you've probably seen it yourself with like fight shows where they go on too late and everybody's got all these plans about what you're going to do afterwards and then by the time you you know by the time you get out of there everything's shut and then you end up eating mcdonald's like so that's your your post-fight <laughs> celebration yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and when you said that it was such a big experience what do you what like Obviously, I know what you mean, but what, what do you what do you mean by that? Like the adrenaline and and the build up, and it's always on your mind. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's like um, it, it, you, it engrosses you for the whole. Yeah, thing. yeah, like you can't think about anything else for like a certain amount of weeks in the lead up to it, and then it's all over, and then you you think about all these things you're gonna do afterwards, and yeah. yeah. And do you think about what you could have done in it? You, like you know, there's a build up. There's the, the, there's the actual event and then there's like the post like I should have done this I wish I'd have done that I would yeah, just, yeah. Do, you yeah. Find, do you find that? yeah yeah definitely yeah like I mean and I think that's the I think that's one of the reasons like why fighting becomes addictive as well it's because even if you win um, like you know because I think when I when I first started like having kind of proper MMA fights because I did like amateur uh, events where it was like you'd have a few fights in one day oh, but then but but it's it's the same as what we do at the like gym in, with like no court. yeah no yeah. headshots competition yeah. so I did quite a lot of them yeah. but then with the bigger fights it's like I thought I'll just have one just to see how I go but then once you have one fight then afterwards you're like ah you know it was you know even if you win or you lose but you think I didn't do this right I didn't do that right I want to have one more goal where everything where I do everything perfect yeah but you never do everything it never, yeah, it's yeah. never going to be perfect because yeah. then you think because I mean I had I remember thinking I had a few fights where I thought oh, everything went perfectly but the other guy wasn't really that good. So I don't know if I could have, you know, maybe he didn't know how to defend the arm lock or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they, then it becomes, I wonder if I could do that against someone who gets out of the arm lock and then I have to do something else. Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. it kind of becomes like a, you want like a perfect performance um, and it never really happens. So Because you've got the other guy who also wants the perfect performance. Yeah, do you yeah. Know what I, mean? I think people don't realise, you watch the UFC and, actually, before I go into this, well, just to clarify, what's the difference between UFC and MMA? 
Well, UFC really, it's just like, it's one of the brands, I suppose you could say, or like it's the name of one of the promotions, but it's like the biggest the biggest promotion that people know. It's the league. Yes, yeah, so that's the league. So it's kind of like saying um, that soccer is the game and English Premier League is like one of the leagues. Yeah. Yeah. And then, or like FIFA is one of the leagues or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. so, so, but it's, yeah. So UFC is the brand and the league that people are playing. Signed to and fighting to, yeah. There's Bellator, One FC, yeah. Did a cage rage all the way down the thing, and the the sport, yeah, is, is MMA, MMA yeah, yeah, the sport yeah. Is MMA, yeah, for sure. I knocked myself off. What I was gonna say, I was gonna say, oh yeah, the person is good. Is um, the other person is trying to hit you as well. I, what I think people don't realize is how difficult it is to actually land a clean shot. Like, yeah. It's really fucking difficult to land a clean shot, right, against someone else that's looking just at you, zoned in, watching you. Maybe not a jab or a body shot, but like a clean KO. Is a, it's a difficult thing to, yeah, to, to yeah. get. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is for sure. And then it's, um, I suppose that's like why they always say in boxing, like if you actually go looking for it, it ne- yeah. it's never going to happen. So that's kind of like the more uh, like... Um, you know, philosophical side of it where you're just trying to do everything perfectly as much as you can and then the right thing will happen at the right time. Whereas if you go kind of looking for it too much, if you go out thinking, oh, I'm going to land this big punch, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, because yeah. telegraph, you need to set it up, right? You need yeah. To hide behind something else or whatever. What do you think, just, what do you think about MMA striking against boxing striking? Um, like, well, no, like, it's interesting. I think it's, it's kind of become a completely different thing now. It's like, I think at the start, uh, MMA was probably a bit behind with the striking, yeah. but now, I mean, you can really see, like, I don't know if you've seen the fight at the weekend, yeah. with Justin Gachi yeah, and, um, and uh, the other guy, like one guy is definitely the more experienced striker, but thing, some things that you do in Muay Thai or boxing, they're just not really going to transfer over so well. Um, I just because there's... think that was quite evident in that fight, yeah? Yeah, it, I mean, it seems like it. I think Gachi is probably a bit heavier as well, so he, he probably bigger, stacked on more weight. Yeah, but, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. And he was just absorbing them shots? Is that yeah, what yeah. And, and I suppose, like, there's just... There, there's just, like, so many other, like, little small, um, you know, details and stuff. But... I think the, you know, in the old days, people would have said, like, if you got someone who's like Gachi, who's like mostly a wrestler and he's up against a more experienced kickboxer or, you know, Muay Thai fighter, it would make more sense from to not try to trade strikes with him. But yeah. now you can see that MMA striking has probably, like, it's probably become its own sort of thing where, where like, uh, someone who specializes in MMA striking can probably beat a boxer in a, in striking in an MMA fight oh, in an, in an, yeah, yeah yeah just because I mean there's so many like there's so many like things that you can do in boxing that probably won't really work so well because and of the size of the gloves size of the gloves and I suppose just the fact that um, you know there's always things to worry about like elbows and kicks and all that as yeah, well yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that great I felt like distance was a was was a big part to play in that. He was always, I can't remember the other guy, Fizar or whatever he's called. Uh, Fiz, Fizayev, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, he was like, he was just a little bit short, What like, you know, he just didn't have the reach by a little bit, I think. He, yeah. And also when Gaethje was tagging him, he was splitting him and he was causing Yeah, really he was damage. doing more damage yeah, with his strikes. Yeah, yeah, I think that, again, that was a weight kind of, yeah, weight kind of issue. Anyway, go on. And what did you think? Just while we're here, what about um, Leon Edwards? I haven't actually watched that oh. one yet. I've been kind of working my way through it. So and I my know goodness. it's like five rounds. So I'm kind of yeah. waiting to get. Uh, yeah, I'll try to watch that later on. Yeah, yeah I've it? seen like some clips of it. I've heard about it and stuff. Yeah, so. he was like he was yeah. almost like a matador in some areas. You know yeah. what I mean? Like kept the distance amazingly well. So did you ever get into any of them food? Going back to the food conversation, we'll probably keep slipping off that because I love talking about fighting. But did you ever slip into any of them food trends like, you know, Rocky? I remember kids at school, I might have been guilty of it myself, where you're eating the raw eggs. Did you ever do that? Nah, when you, didn't nah, you? I, never, I never tried eating raw eggs. So did, hey, did you try eating raw I, eggs? I, did when I, I watched Rocky. Yeah. And, like, and then there was a few kids at school and they'd be like, oh, you eat raw eggs and you get real, you know. And, yeah. I, I and how like, did, it, did it work? Nah, did, nah. Nah, nah, nah. There was a lad who used to work here, Tim Chapelas. Big shout out to Tim. He used to love the raw eggs. Oh, he okay. used to love them, yeah. Because I've always heard like it's dangerous. You can get like salmonella nah, or something like that from like, it. But... You, uh, no, no, uh, 
I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no, but I, you know, yeah. as long as they're good and free range and whatever. I yeah, no, nah, like I've done, you know, especially when it kind of, um, like uh, once I got into like bigger fights and I had to cut weight and trying to get down to, like the lowest weight I got to was 70 kilos, which, and which what is... what are you today? No, I'm probably like 80, 82, something yeah, like okay. that. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, in terms of... Um, like people cutting weights for fights that's not it's not a huge amount because some people cut you know way a lot more than that but it, yeah. it was always just a real struggle for me so then i went to get rid of the weight yeah well i mean like I, it just i think if people are naturally heavier it comes off easier yeah, but yeah. i would be you know maybe i would start weight cutting and i would be 77 kilos and then i would be able to get down to like 74 but then the last little bit would be you know just wouldn't come off but i think no no there's a lot like i to be honest i didn't really know what i was doing like yeah. i did i mean one of the things for me is like i didn't have um you know i didn't really throughout most of my mma fights i didn't really have any proper mma coaches who'd had a fight themselves and who could say you know do this do this do this like i had all the people who were like that I trained with who had jujitsu experience and Muay Thai experience and stuff, but no one, no one that could, that had actually been in there and could say, this is what you should do. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Like How it, does that make you feel now? Do you feel like you didn't get a fair crack at the, if it? No, nah, I mean, not really. No. Like, I mean, to be honest, I, like it's, 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 uh, there wasn't really that many people around back then anyway yeah, yeah. that had had MMA fights. So like it's, yeah, you yeah, didn't, it's yeah, sport, yeah, cause right? it's such fair, a new sport. Fair yeah. Point, fair cause point, so I had yeah. my first fight in like, um, whenever, like first kind of amateur fights really in 2000. So that's like 23 years ago. So it was, even if you wanted to find MMA coaches, there wasn't that many. Um, yeah. But I mean, there was still like, there's a lot of coaches that, that definitely contributed and I like learned a lot from. But in terms of someone who'd actually been in there and said, this is exactly like th pretty much the things that I can do for the people who I train now, yeah. I can tell them like, this is what it's going to be like. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to. And what will, you t what, will, what will you ask? Will you say like, you know, obviously the, the, when you see people weighing in at whatever, 75 kilos, 140, sorry, uh, I was going pounds then. What, like 145 or 170 or 185, whatever it is. That's just the way that they weigh in at that small time. It's a small yeah. window, right? They're walking around a lot heavier than that. And obviously, yeah. they've got professionals, and we'll get more into the professional side of that. But even now, will you say, look, you need to start cutting down? Will you talk them through where they need to be? Do you wear them at the gym? Because now, I just want to just clean up a few things. You were a professional fighter, but now you've got your own gym, and you've got fighters, and you put on shows, which we'll get more into. But you've got a group of people that you put fights on for them and whatnot, right? So yeah. you support them in that and talk them through the diet through the through the build up to the fight well i mean usually the way it works is that you know for people um for their first fight we would usually say so say for example if you've got a guy who's um 80 kilos yeah. we'll say and maybe they're like they haven't been training that long they might be like you know yeah, a little bit overweight or whatever be like myself. Well, <laughs> well you could just say then look you're gonna have this fight but you're gonna be fine another first timer so as long as you get as long as you lose three kilos and you get to 77 that's probably all right because you're not you're not fighting you're not fighting justin gachi or something yeah, like that yeah. you find another guy who's probably training like four or five times a week so the the weight probably isn't going to make that much of a difference right, okay. and then if you go well on that one then maybe the next one lose another a little bit get a little bit lower but there'll be a certain point where it's probably not worth getting that much like if you start off at 80 kilos you're probably not going to get that much lower than okay than, yeah and that person that other person will be 77 kilos as well is that what you're saying yeah yeah so you All just roundabout. yeah what kind yeah. of leeway would you give for, for the first fight uh if, like for, well i mean really the way it works with um with uh like promotions is that you can just agree any weight okay, so yeah. you, we could say i mean it's it's obviously easier if you stick to the standard you stick yeah. to like so there's 77 then there's 70 and then there's like 66 whatever like so those are the ufc weights kilos so what's 77 kilos in pounds in the ufc i think that is 77 be so 155 one, that 155 is 70 right okay. so 185 yeah 185 yeah yeah, okay. yeah. so um yeah, so, but I mean, 
basically the uh, Victoria Combat Sports Board to like give you the permit for the show. Yeah. They don't really care what weight the the people are as long as they're within a certain weight of each other. So one guy can't fight someone who's five kilos heavier than yeah. him or whatever. They Do you have know what to be within. Is? Well, I think it's. It's probably something like three or four kilos, yeah, something yeah. like that. So if they're, if you know, maybe if they're 80 kilos, they can fight someone up to three kilos heavier. But yeah, then yeah. the lower you get, the closer you get to 60, then obviously, Tighter. yeah, it's it's like a little bit smaller. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, the big thing really is, and, you know, I've kind of messed this up a few times with the promotions, is making sure that both teams understand what weight exactly they're going to be. Because sometimes we've said, all right, you guys are going to be 66 kilos, We've agreed 66 kilos, and then one team has said, oh, it's the official UFC, which is 65.2, and then the other team have fought at 62. So you need to really be sure that both people understand exactly the... Really? Yeah. I mean, and, and like to me, I think it shouldn't probably be that much of a big deal, because if you're a first-timer, like... and this so is how many fights would you say? Like, until it should become yeah, yeah. an issue. Uh, I, I'd say, like, until you're... I don't know, like maybe until you're kind of looking at getting your UFC contract. Because, yeah. I mean, to, to, the way that I look at it, the most, the, the most valuable like, asset that an up-and-coming fighter can have is experience. So you want to have – the more experience you can get, the better – you're always going to be better. So if, if you could have – if you got to fight somebody and you've had 10 more fights than they have, but he's like 500 grams heavier – than the 10 yeah so yeah, so the yeah. priority should be experienced like so you should be i think you should be prepared to fight people that are a little bit heavier just to get that experience yeah. because that's way more valuable than having a little bit of extra weight and why why is the experience so so great because obviously right you've, you could train for a year for instance train for a full year two guys train for a full year and then one guy has a whatever, three five-minute rounds or three three-minute rounds or whatever. Let's just call it 15 minutes, fight, yeah, for yeah. instance. And the other guy doesn't. But that guy that's had the fight is going to learn so much in that 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Like, do, you th do you think that the experience in the, in the actual arena of the, of the combat catapults you so much further? Do you think that... Yeah, yeah, def I like that's what I That's what I believe. It definitely does because I just think that like... And I mean, you've probably seen this yourself as well where like, for example, you've got people... And, and, you know, this is a good way that I see it happening all the time because it's... You can you can see it with jujitsu. There's people who come in and do jujitsu a couple of times a week for years and years and years. And then there's another guy who comes in, trains for a few months, but he jumps in every competition... So he hasn't actually put in that many more hours. Like he's just gone and had a few matches on a Saturday. A couple of weeks later, he has another few matches on a Saturday. But within like a year, he's overtaken everybody. Really? Because the time that you put in in competition, it's like, I suppose it activates another part of your brain. So you take in the information a lot more. Whereas like you're turning up at the same jet. Like obviously you will improve if you just keep turning up. Like that's what people say. Just keep turning up, you'll improve. But I think that... Slower. Yeah, yeah. I think it's slower. And I think it's kind of like, you know, it's more comfortable. You know, you're in your comfort zone. I turn up, I uh, do the moves. I have a chat with my mates. I have a few rolls and I go home. I'll, don't get me wrong. This is, my, this is perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, that, and, it, and that's good. Like, yeah. it is good. Like, that's what, that's what people, um, you know, that's a big part of it. That's what people want to do, really. Nice. But if you really want to improve, then you have to push yourself. Like, you know, kind of go out of your comfort zone because that's where you're going to learn. And I, and I mean, really, that's that's pretty much the only reason why I competed. I didn't really like enjoy fighting or competing or... You didn't? Nah, n not really. I just fought, like, as I said earlier, it kind of becomes a, a little bit addictive after yeah, a while. Yeah. But the main yeah. thing is, I, if I'm going to be doing martial arts for my whole life, I want to try to get as good at it as I can. Yeah. So the best, you know, I figured out like the best way to get good at it is to keep competing. The more, the, because each, each time you compete, that's like six months of training. It's kind of like, you know, yeah. you know, like in the Matrix, you get yeah, oh, yeah. six months of training and <laughs> yeah, just yeah. appeared from nowhere. And I think that's as well because when you're competing against someone else, you're not doing it at 
at your pace. Yeah. You could be doing it at their pace. Yeah, yeah. And that other person is putting the, the pr- a pressure on you that you that a, a training partner probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. Like a real, like, he will try and snap your arm or he will try and put you to sleep or he will try and knock you out, right? Like, yeah, that's yeah. what the goal is, right? Where a training partner is not like that. So it's just lifting them stakes that little bit more, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and just like everything that you... I mean, this is, is something I've seen where you could show somebody, right, this is, this is how you get out of the arm lock or whatever, and then you can see, oh, they're not really that, they're not really that um, paying too much attention to it because there isn't, like, that sense of urgency. And then sometimes I say this to people as well. I say, like, you know, I'm going to show you how to do a rear naked choke or whatever, but instead of just thinking like it's, you know, Wednesday night, imagine someone's going to come into your house in the middle of the night tonight and they're going to kill you yeah. and you have to do this rear naked choke to them. Then you're really going to pay attention and think, oh, well, better, I better figure out how to do it. <laughs> and it's going to stick with you a little bit more. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's a kind of an extreme example of like that's what competition does when there's like more urgency. Um, I think stuff sticks to your brain a bit better. And that, and that is one of the advantages where a lot of people say this. Uh, the one of the advantages about jiu-jitsu is you can go quite hard even though you do blow your knees and there's still injuries don't yeah, you yeah. but you can go a lot harder in jiu-jitsu than you can in striking right yeah <laughs> for long term mental we're talking about mental damage here yeah. head, head trauma and things like that so I guess yeah and what would you what would you advise people to if you're going to go to a gym what would you say to start off with striking like jiu-jitsu or because some people are quite intimidated to come into gyms and they're yeah, like, yeah. You know, like I don't want to go in I'm going to get beaten up or like I don't know it, it, it's not people don't find it a comfortable space yeah do you find this you must find this do you? um yeah it's interesting so like you mean if someone just want to do it recreationally or yeah, they yeah, just recreationally, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like now it is it is the, uh, and I mean it's it's interesting I can't remember if, uh, if we talked about this before but i mean it's something that because i've been doing it for so long um you know because i've been trying since i was whatever it is like 14 or whatever but because you're surrounded with it all the time you just feel like ah you know it doesn't it doesn't feel that intimidating but then you forget what people looking at it from the outside are going to feel like yeah um yeah and like I've seen people say like where if you ask any martial arts instructor you know you know, design a poster or, or whatever, a website for the gym, they're going to show like one guy kicking another guy in the head <laughs> and everybody and all of the, all of the coaches think, oh, this is great because everybody's going to look at it and think, yeah, I can kick people in the head. But most people are looking at it thinking I'm going to be the one that's getting kicked in the head. So it actually <laughs> deters people instead. Yeah. I remember you so, telling me that before. Yeah. That's a really good way of looking at it. Yeah. It's like a left brain, right brain yeah, yeah, kind that's of a, thing, right? And, and you don't realize that that's most of the people coming in, they do feel like, oh, I'm just going to get beat up and, <laughs> exactly. um, yeah so but it's it's not like that is it I don't think it's like that I've nah, trained nah. at a few gyms now and most of the time 90% of the people are really nice yeah yeah most of, especially in that recreational thing uh, professionals firemen or a lot of firemen a lot of coppers and that yeah do you know what I mean um yeah, I, yeah, that's, not, that's not what. Not really meatheads. Nah, not that's really that's meatheads. what I'd say. Like most of the, I no mean, there's, there's, meatheads, by the yeah, way. there's <laughs> obviously some exceptions, but I reckon like the majority. If you if you've never done any kind of like martial arts or combat sports or boxing before, you probably would think if I join up at one of these gyms, I'm just gonna everybody's gonna like I'm gonna have to prove myself. Yeah, yeah. But I would say that that's generally like not gonna be the case. Most people like the reason that most people are doing it is like they just want to improve themselves, improve their skills, and I mean, I suppose the big thing is like for for people who are experienced, they're not gonna look at someone who comes in off the street and think, "Oh, I'll beat that!" Like there's nothing to there's be no gained. Yeah, in yeah. That, right? yeah there's not like if, if anything, they're gonna think, "Oh, this guy doesn't know anything. I'm gonna try to teach him yeah, so that yeah. he becomes a better training partner for <laughs> yeah, me." And exactly. that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we can fight, and then I can learn from yeah, exactly yeah, another yeah. body or for sure. That's a, exactly in them places. No one's interested or very you know there might be the odd one two. But the majority of people are definitely not looking to take your head off or anything. Nah, That's not what they're nah, into, right? Nah. I must say, when, though, when you start skipping and it fucking whacks you on the toe, and you're like, oh, you know what? You're like, man, that stings at first when it's, you know, you yeah. Speak, like, then, you, yeah, then you get used to it. And then, <laughs> cold, yeah. like if it's cold, the gym's just being opened up, it's freezing cold, the mats are cold, your feet are cold, and it whacks you like, 
Yeah. <laughs> did I, you, you probably don't really like remember that. I, I don't even do too much skipping anymore, but yeah, I have I have had that experience a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, a, it's a nightmare. But going back to the food thing, I'll say that many times. Nutrition, like nutrition, ready meals, chefs, especially in the UFC, Bellator, these bigger organizations of well, they've, they've, they've blew up over the last probably yeah. five years, seven years, whatever it might be. Do you think that has uh, projected the sport or, you know, pushed the sport on the, the nutritional side of things? Yeah, I think it definitely, like, I think, you know, probably the nutrition side of it is just something that's become a lot more professional, like, in recent times. Um, but, I mean, the whole, the whole like, uh, sport really has become a lot more, like, obviously a lot more mainstream, a lot more professional, and, you know, that's, um, I suppose that's the side effect of it. You're going to see, you know, they look at older sports and they see, oh, how do these guys do that? And then, you know, they'll they'll kind of, you know, figure out the best practices to, to add into it as well. But, uh, yeah, I suppose with, um, with MMA and with boxing as well, because there's, you know, the weigh-ins and weight cutting, that's where food is going to become like a bigger part. So it's it's probably more important for, you know, these kind of combat sports than it would be for, obviously, like it's important for other stuff like, you know, cycling and all that yeah, as well. But Formula One driving, yeah, but, but jockeys. Yeah, 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 but I just think like there's not, I mean, you could train for months and months and then get rid and then if you're the wrong weight the day before the fight, the whole fight could yeah. get scrapped. So it is such a Rugby vital players, part of it now. Is, it doesn't really matter if they yeah. fluctuate half a kilo or kilo for sure. Yeah. But I definitely feel like, you know, like having the science behind it. I know there's some real big names out there now. I Lockhart, thingy Lockhart. Yeah, and yeah. There's all these top people now that are doing that and helping people with weight cuts. But it, it, for me, it, it seems logical what you're putting in. You know, if you were to put shit fuel in a Formula One car, yeah. you're not going to get the same result, right? Yeah. And obviously, calories, and look, I'm no dietitian by any stretch of the imagination. But like, you know, calories are calories. And if you're putting shit calories in, like chocolate, chips, and whatever. Yeah. But then you're putting good calories in, like, you know, sweet potato, blueberries, clean protein, fish, or whatever it might be. Even though you're getting the same calories, one's gonna, you're going to get a better performance yeah, out of definitely. one, right? So I think, I definitely feel like that is made it more athletic. If you look back at the UFC back in the day, it was just big guys. Yeah. Tank Abbott, these just sluggers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, you look at them, they look like they could be like whatever, right? It doesn't matter what. Yeah. It could be any, it could be sprinters or... Well, I also like in, I mean, I don't know how long this has been, but like the drug testing's got a lot more strict in yeah. recent times as well. So there's like a big period where, um, you know, people could probably eat whatever they wanted because there was, you know, there was no drug testing They're and they would just inject in themselves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but now that is a lot more strict. And even like the rules, the rules with the weigh-ins are a lot more strict as well. Like where, I'd say it hasn't been that long ago since people used to be able to do IV drips mm. to rehydrate after the weigh-ins, and now they can't do that anymore. What do you think about that? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, like obviously th this room, this kind, well, it doesn't ruin the food side of it because people still need to eat healthily. But yeah. I've never really been a big fan of the weight cutting and weight you know, way inside of it anyway, yeah. because I've always just felt like, to me, um, the, the only reason I'm interested in MMA or had anything to do with it is because like, I've been always interested in martial arts and combat sports and finding out like, what's the best way to fight? What's the most efficient way to fight? So that, that the, um, like the idea of like, you can, uh, have an advantage in the fight because you're heavier than the other guy. That's not really, you know, to me, that doesn't seem like a, a big thing. Like, yeah, cause, yeah. cause if you say, for example, like, you know, think of a movie like the karate kid yeah, and then he's getting bullied. And then if the secret to his success is that he like cut weight and then the day of the fight, he was 10 kilos heavier. That wouldn't be, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, wouldn't yeah, be yeah. like, but like, it's more to me, like martial arts is about learning techniques, learning the best way to train, you know, and then that's what gives you the advantage in fighting. So I've always felt like, I mean, I would be, I don't think it would ever happen, but I would probably be happier if they said, no more weight cutting, you know, we're going to weigh you right before you get into the cage. And if you're too heavy, you're not allowed to fight. Yeah, and then okay. people could just get used to it. Well, 1FC 
do the hydration. You've been involved. You've yeah, yeah. fighting one FC yeah. as well, right? You've yeah. been around that. But I mean, the, the problem with one FC is like that they kind of got away with it. Or they've, they've got away. Or they do it differently, but their process is kind of even more convoluted. And it's more like you're doing weigh-ins every day in the lead up to the fight. Hydration it, tests. Yeah, that, yeah. So, so weigh-ins and hydration tests to make sure people aren't losing too much weight. But I mean, people will always. I think if, if I think if you just told people like if you know you're fighting at 70 kilos, you got to be you know if you're 70 and a half when you get into the cage, that's okay. If you're like 72, you're not gonna fight. So, yeah, okay. so then, you know, people would probably try to be like 69 kilos or be 68 kilos and that extra little bit of weight probably wouldn't make that much difference. Yeah. I guess when you're talking big money, big business, people are always going to try and find an advantage somewhere, yeah. or, somewhere or another, aren't they? They just are. It's just, it's just the, the way of it. So you, just going back to the IV thing real quick, there was uh, against Volk, wasn't it? Volkanovsky thing. He said that he took an IV and they said it is... It, I heard something that it is legal if you, for some reason or another, so he's going to get away with it. But I feel like IV should. I feel like IV should be allowed. I feel like. I don't like know to, well, I mean the pro. I, feel like I, should. I mean it's the problem with it. Right? It's just water. Yeah, but it's going back directly, directly back into the muscles. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. Like I don't know. I mean, I think once you start allowing stuff like that again, then people will find other things that we should, yeah. So what, like, what is weight cutting? I guess people will be people won't know or weight cutting. What's weight cutting? And how do you go about it? As in, like, water loading and all these kind of things. So what? Yeah. Just run us through it. What well, is? I mean, there's a lot more kind of sophisticated ways of doing it now. Um, but the old school kind of way that I actually did a few times that didn't really work very well is that you would just basically try to. Um, diet in the weeks leading up to the fight and then maybe by dieting you would lose like um, uh, I don't know like four or five kilos and then like try to not eat any carbs and stuff but then that's that's bad because then you don't have as much energy and then on the day of the weigh-in you just get in the sauna and so like I think there was maybe one fight where I spent like about four hours in the (laughs) sauna getting in and out and then sometimes you'd be in the, the sauna as yeah, well. yeah. It's, it's well, especially if you've been dieting for a whole yeah, week, yeah, and then you haven't, um, you know, you haven't eaten much, and you've already, you're already pretty depleted. Yeah. But then you'd be in the sauna wearing a this sauna is the day suit. Before the fight, you yeah, life, yeah, day, I mean? yeah, it's, day it's before the fight, and then um, you'd be getting in and out, and you get out, and you check the weight, and your weight hasn't changed at all, and you're like completely dry, scraping yourself with yeah, the credit scraping cards. with a coin yeah, and all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Um. Yeah, so then, like, the more kind of uh, um, kind of modern stuff that people have been doing recently is, uh, and we, we have actually haven't really done that much of it at our gym because oh, yeah. we, we don't have too many people that have cut a lot of weight. Yeah. But, there, you know, stuff that people will do is they'll do, like, the water loading, which is drinking a lot of water in the, in the, um, the week leading up it's to the heat, fight. It's right? Gallon yeah, stuff, right? Yeah. They drink absolutely truckloads. And then... Like the day before, you stop drinking water, and then they do. I mean, the the other problem was I, um, that if you go in the sauna, you're losing what like water from your brain as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's not really a good idea because you're gonna get hit yeah, in the yeah, head, and that protects you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently, like your brain doesn't really fully rehydrate for like a week after that it's one of the last organs i think yeah something like that, that we had. so i heard I, yeah again, I'm not so so now like a lot of people will do it like where they'll have the sauna thing like kind of sauna machine but leaves their head out of is it is that why they don't, they don't put the head in right? yeah okay, yeah and i think it's probably just like you know once your head gets dehydrated you just feel that more yeah, like yeah, stressed yeah, yeah. out and uncomfortable whereas i think if the rest of your body is getting it mm. then um and yes. then they'll just piss it out, won't they? They'll just piss out. Oh, well, they just like sweat. You'll yeah. just sweat out a lot of it. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot, lot. Yeah, yeah. So that that's kind of what people do these days. And then also like the diet leading up to it as well. Like people can still eat. So they know like which foods are going to hold water and which foods you have to avoid in the weeks leading up to it. Because some of them are saying like, I've never eaten so much and the weight's just falling off, right? Yeah. Because people, obviously now you can, top scientists can look in and see what foods react to your body and what at the top top level yeah and they'll say look that's going to not work for you this will work for you and really structure it yeah 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 it's it's it's, a 
It's a mad old thing. The weight cuttings are it, even in the sport. It's a real, um, a real topic of uh, conversation, of positive and negative. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Well, some I mean, of the jumps are massive. massive. Yeah, yeah. Some people put on a lot yeah. afterwards. Yeah, and I mean the the thing is as well. I was like, I don't really know. I think because it's such a new thing, you don't really know what the long-term effects are of it as well. So that's, I suppose that's one of the other sides. It's like, you it's got the good. Data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, all these things, I, you know, all, all, like I'm no kind of um, medical expert, but you just imagine that your body probably isn't supposed to be doing that. Well, they say you can only do it so many times as well. Yeah. Like, well, that's what I think. It probably, it gets harder each time because yeah. your body sort of figures out like, ah, we're losing too much water. Like next time this happens, we'll respond to it. Because you're designed to not to lose weight. The human yeah. body is designed not to lose weight. That's why it's hard to lose yeah. weight. Because yeah. It, you know, it wants you to be lit. like the human body wants you to sit around, right, and just be safe yeah. and eat, right. That's what you're designed to do. It's and like to survive, you know, it's gonna think, oh, you're in a desert and there's no water, so I need to hold on to this fluid that I've yeah, got yeah. for as long as possible. So. And then you're just pumping it. Yeah. And it's bad for the kidneys and the yeah, whole thing, yeah. right? For yeah. Sure. So I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like it's it's definitely uh, technologically advanced. But I just don't really know. Is it? It was supposed to be the same with a lot of things. You know, is it an improvement for the better, or is it actually going to be worse for the people who are doing it in the long term? Yeah. And just last thing on the weight cutting, I think as much as I think the UFC and and, and, and uh, the MMA area, um, organizations have got it right, where they make the best fight the best. There's only one belt. There's quite big gaps between each weight, so there's only a handful of champions so they can really promote them yeah. as opposed to boxing is what I'm, I guess is what I'm saying yeah, yeah. where boxing you've got like a belt every few pounds yeah. sometimes and you've uh, probably got too many people that no one really knows who, who all the fighters are as well yeah exactly but I'm, like the point I'm making is like in you can you can the weight cutting's not as serious in boxing because you can fight closer to your weight yeah because, but where in in, in in UFC or in MMA you know you might be 155 you know but your actual proper weight might be 163 yeah 167 but you're not big enough to go to 170 so you're gonna have to cut all the way down to, yeah. to 155 do you know what i mean where like at least in boxing you can go oh i fit nicely in this bracket yep. i can go up and down a little bit i can live normally cut weight a little bit a few weeks before the fight and there's no big big weight cuts do yeah. you know what I mean yeah. the big weight cuts is definitely in MMA there's no two ways about it I'm yeah. pretty nah, sure because there's a huge there's a huge gap between some of the some of the divisions like and the biggest one was actually like in my because I was like I'm closer to 77 kilos yeah. but the people who are some of the people who are fighting at 77 kilos they might be cutting down from like 90 something yeah exactly Yeah. so then you can't really fight 90 kilo people so you gotta you gotta like I have to then try to get down to 70 kilos yeah. which yeah like as I said we didn't really know the best way to cut weight back in those days yeah. so um, it's just interesting so what I'm saying is the, 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 the joy of the UFC and, and Bellator and all these brands of like having like limited champions that can really focus on is a positive but the negative is there's too big a gap between yeah. the weight. So then the, the, you're never going to get rid of the weight cutting because it, unless you have a champion at every five. Yeah, kilos. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There's too much variable. You're going to have to cut it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Anyway, about weight cutting, you're, you're an accountant by trade. Is that right? So you trained as an accountant? Yeah, it? so I I did like a business degree. Yeah. And then um, uh, after university, then... You know, started working and in, in, so I went to university in London. Then you know, started working in London. So you left Ireland to go to go yeah, to yeah. So I, w I left Ireland in 1997 to go to to university. Oh. Yeah. So I haven't really I haven't lived there since yes, yeah, since then. Yeah. Okay. So it's quite a long time ago, nearly 30 years. Yeah. And did, did yeah. you get into? A, did you do a accounting job or a business job? Yeah. So I did. Um, I. Yeah, I was working for, actually, it's pretty much always working for advertising. I just ended up working for an advertising company as soon as I left uni. And then um, after that, then kind of worked for other advertising companies, but like in the finance and accounting kind of department. Yeah, okay. And then 
while I was working there, I thought I need to get an older qualification. So then I started studying for the professional like accountancy qualifications while I was while I was working, and then uh, that was actually also while I was like having my fight career as well. So I had like a few things all going on at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bit of yeah. backup plan. Did you finish your qualification? Nah, I'd seen never finished that. Like, I, I it, it just took so long. I, I, I was kind of probably maybe three quarters of the way through it, yeah. and then I, I moved to Australia. And then I tried to, um, I actually did some of it then when I came to Australia as well. Mm. But I just got to this point where I thought, I'm not really interested in doing this anymore. And it's so time consuming. And then even if I do get the qualification, I don't think I'm really going to use it. Yeah. So then that was like, and I think that was around, probably just around the time of my 30th birthday. And I just made the decision, that I'm just going to focus on trying to become a martial arts instructor instead. Because I, you know, I was already coaching and you know, training people a little bit at this stage, but I thought I need to, you know, instead of, you know, being kind of going too many directions, just choose one thing yeah, to focus yeah, on. Yeah, on something yeah. for sure. And, but now, you, now you've got a gym and you've got a fight promotion, your own yeah. fight promotion. So are you leaning into that now? Is it them experiences coming in? And Oh, like the kind of business yeah, exactly. experience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's helped much, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. like it, I think it is. It's probably, I mean, it's hard to say what would it be like if I'd never done anything like that before. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. it probably has helped, you know, in some ways to, yeah. to just have an understanding about, like, how uh, profit and loss work and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And how, you know, people think about gyms and they think that, you know the fighters and the trainers and uh, sorry, the, the trainers make heaps of money off the professional fighters and all that. But I remember talking to you before and you said, re really it's the club members that, that really, a, a gym's based on the club members, not off you have, if you have a superstar. Yeah, Is that right? yeah, yeah, that, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think we did discuss yeah. this before. I, yeah. think, I didn't realize that to be honest. I yeah. thought it was all about, you know, trying to, you're always looking for that superstar as a golden ticket. Nah, n not really. I mean, I think a lot of, probably like a lot of, uh, you know, instructors or coaches do that. Like yeah, they think, okay. oh, if I can just train someone that becomes famous, that becomes like Conor McGregor, then um, I'll be rich. Yeah. But I don't think it, I don't think it ever really happens because the amount of time that goes into those people, like, yeah, uh, like even, even if, even if they do become Conor McGregor, it's probably still not worth the hours that go into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a bit I of mean, a labor of love. Yeah, yeah. Like, so that's the way I look at it. I like, I train fighters, but I don't really expect, you know, much from it, to be honest. I, yeah. it's, it's basically, the way I look at it is like, if I can... If I can train someone and they can do really well and get uh, get good results and win fights and like I don't know maybe get a UFC contract, that kind of tells me oh, I must be doing a good job. Yeah, okay. But then on the other hand, like seeing someone that's like you know we got a kid at the gym who is like getting bullied and he's like only a young kid and he comes in and then see him improving and see him like tapping people out and training, then that's just the same really. Yeah, because yeah, 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 you're changing lives yeah, that, that way, yeah, you're changing yeah. lives. And you can see, and it's, you know, it's like- Is he doing good, that kid? Yeah, yeah, and he like he's, you know, you can see the change and it's kind of like, um, yeah, like both people kind of take the same amount of time to train as well. So yeah. it's like, yeah. And what do you think about that with kids? Do you think all, sh all kids should, should do it at martial arts. I say that because I think at most kids should do some sort of martial arts. Do you think? Do you think the same? Yeah, well, I think I think it probably would help. I mean, yeah. like not. I mean, the the thing with martial arts is as well, like in all kind of combat sports, is like people. Not everybody's gonna enjoy it. Like I think yeah. it is beneficial for people, but at the end of the day, you know, people might come in, give it a go, not really enjoy it, and then yeah. like it's not really for them. But I think that for the majority of people, it probably would be it probably would be helpful because the kids who think that they're really tough, they would probably come in and then they'd do a few rounds of rolling or sparring or whatever, and they think, oh, hang on a second, I'm not as tough as I think I am. Yeah, so, yeah. so then if they try to, they might think twice the next time that they're gonna like try to pick a fight with somebody, yeah. and then the the kids who aren't so tough, they'll come in and they're pro they're obviously gonna think, oh, you know, I'm I'm no good, I wouldn't be able to do any of these moves or whatever. But then when someone actually sits them down and goes, move your arm like this, move your arm like this, and then before they know it, they're getting the hang of it, and then that's gonna like that's gonna benefit them as well. So and I think the confidence, the confidence is is, is unbelievable. I, I really feel like that's 
it's helped me heaps through. I was never any good, don't get me wrong, like, you know, but I, I did a lot of it. So it was always, I always felt, you always felt a little like, confidence. It gives yeah, you I don't know. I, re- I remember, like, you always looked like you had, and even with a grappling as well, you're picking stuff up pretty fast, but, like, your striking and boxing was always pretty, pretty slick, so. Yeah, that, not very, like, you know, I've done a lot of it. Yeah. Does, you know, I'm pretty, you know, pretty... Yeah, anyway, I don't. I wouldn't say I was a, a, any sort of expert. Do you know what I mean? I've just done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of it. Um, but I feel like that always gives you confidence. Like I always feel like in a situation, you're never nervous about going into a situation. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. even, even in meetings, in business meetings and all that, like whatever you come to in life, I always think if it comes to it, I'll just punch you in the head. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. It all boil, comes, boils down and I feel threatened, I'll just whack you in the head as well. Yeah. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Like... It's never going to get to that, but to have that security of like, I can protect myself no matter what happens here. Yeah. I might make, be made a fool of, I might be whatever, but I'm... At, the At least you've got that, you've got that in your back pocket, I can, yeah. I, I should be able, to be able to walk out of this room safe. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I think, yeah, I think that's... And it, I mean, I suppose the other thing as well, like it's for people who don't have that confidence, like it's not... It's not actually that, they, like, I think they think, oh, I could never learn how to punch or how to, you know, block punches or do arm locks or chokes, but it's not actually that difficult. You know, once you've, once you've been doing it for a while, it's like, you, you're like anybody can pick it up, I think. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Especially at a level where you can just be a little bit confident, a little bit safe, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. obviously, it, what I always found with it was, and it's always the same with any kind of sport, is like, more you do it, like, more, more doors it opens, and you're yeah. like, Fuck, there's more. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I always struggled with not actually throwing shots and definitely not being hit. I was really good at being hit. And, but the, the things that I really struggled with, well, I found the most difficult was moving. Fuck, yeah. it's hard to move. Like, it's really hard to move your feet and your arms at the same time and think about setting up something, slipping something, stepping into the gap, coming back. Do you know what I mean? Feet, yeah, it, like, yeah. It's just... It's hard to put it all together. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think, you know what it is as well? It's like, I think w- kind of what you're describing is like, is kind of like being in the moment and concentrating on like exactly, I have to move, I have to not get hit, I have to, and, it, and you know what? I think I've told you this before as well. Like sometimes people look at um, striking, like boxing or whatever, and then they look at jujitsu and they think jujitsu is more complicated but I'd say that stri- like when they look at boxing, they just think, ah, oh, you're just throwing punches. But the the we could say the benefit or the thing that makes jiu-jitsu easier is a lot of the time you're holding the person down and stopping them from moving. So you've got time to think about what your next move is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas in boxing or striking, um, everything's happening at the same time. So you're thinking, oh, I'm going to move and I'm going to throw this punch. But as you're doing it, the other guys move to a different place and then it all yeah, changes. Yeah. So it's like more dynamic. I've, won, I've, been, I've had like, I, I remember like the thing, you know, the called the zone or whatever else. I think I had one amateur fight, like a proper amateur fight. And I had, I've had like a few sparring sessions. And when I say, few, I mean like, Definitely, all this combined is probably under maybe, maybe five, if I'm lucky. I'm, it might have even been three, but definitely no more than seven. Around about the five, where I've been able to do something and yeah. be able to get them to react, and I know that they're going to do that when I do this. Yeah, and yeah. I know when I step there, they're going to step there, and I'm going to be able to slip that, and I'm going to be able to hit. Do you know what I mean? Just, but like I've done a lot of rounds, like hundreds and hundreds of rounds, and it's probably been like five times it's ever happened. Yeah. Like the whole, the whole t- all that time. The rest of the time, it's just pretty much fucking chaos. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do you know well, what I'm saying? Well, that's, say yeah, that? That, that's it. Because that's the, um, I suppose that goes back to what I was saying before about where it becomes addictive. I think that's the part that becomes addictive where you've put in all this work and then things go well, but then it takes a long time before it happens again. Yeah, and then you're yeah. waiting for the next, uh, yeah. Because yeah, it is quite chaotic. If you, do you not, do you find that as yeah. well? You probably don't find that as much anymore. Or do you yeah. still feel that sometimes? Nah, like you definitely do, yeah. And I suppose it's the same. Um, well, I suppose that's, I think even like with coaching and cornering people as well, that's the same thing. It is like fighting really is all about chaos and it's like who's gonna be who's gonna be able to control it better. Yeah. So we know that you're gonna go out, you're gonna fight this guy. And and I mean, sometimes I hear um, you know, when you hear interviews with coaches and they say, Oh, we had our game plan, it worked perfectly, but you don't really know 
like it's never going to work perfectly because you don't really know what the other team are working on and what the other fighters are working on so like i think you just have to accept that every time there's a fight it's a bit chaotic you've you really don't know what's going to happen but you can only control a certain amount of it and then like I suppose that's the challenge is can we control like exactly where we move where i put my foot where i'm going to put my hand yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. going to happen at each point and that's the uh like that's the big challenge of it um but yeah like the the more you do it i think you kind of find you know so that that's a that's a big thing i do like you know especially with all the fighters i try to we have everything kind of scheduled we've got a plan like the fight's going to be in six weeks we're going to do this session this time this session this time we're going to work on this during this one this during this time the week before the fight we're going to do this this and this like the uh, you know the an hour before the fight we're going to get to the place we're going to wrap the hand so everything is like as much of it is um kind of uh prepared as we can but then you have to accept that at least 50 percent of it is yeah, like beyond yeah. our control and probably more than 50 percent because sometimes you travel somewhere like what happened to me and then you lose your wallet and then there's like <laughs> yeah, all there's yeah, all these yeah. other things that can go on so yeah yeah so you don't accept that right yeah yeah accept it. yeah 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 it's interesting but the more of it you can control um the better it's going to be whereas if you just i'm just going to turn up and fight and hope for the best then that's that's going to make yeah. you know everything more and difficult just, just for the record if people do want to come and train with you and we'll get to it all that in a minute but I mean like if people do want to go to a gym or, a, or, a, or a, an MMA gym or a boxing gym they don't have to fight they, don't, they, they, they could go to an MMA gym or a boxing gym and never have a punch thrown at them right yeah. you can go and just hit bags and, yeah, yeah. And, and do pad work and maybe like a little bit of body stuff but you can go there and just do classes right you don't need yeah. to yeah I'd say like the majority of people like who especially like the majority of people who train with us what will never like they'll never fight i mean i, I think it's kind of different with jujitsu i would kind of encourage everybody who does jujitsu to like compete at least a couple of times yeah, okay. because um you know you'll you'll improve so much and you like you'll you are like it's just good experience but i would say you know for fighting like any i'd say any type of fight where you're actually going to be getting hit that's probably not for everybody like yeah. only only do that if you're really sure you want to do it yeah. because um yeah like it's there's there's always the risk that you could get injured and yeah I, like we don't expect anybody to fight unless they really want to yeah. yeah yeah and then during covid obviously the gym locked down and you went through a nightmare but one of the positives from I, well, I'm, I'm putting words into your mouth here but I, it looks like one of the positives was that you you managed to get your promoter's license during that time Is that yeah right? yeah so what did that entail and then what what have you done from there like yeah so yeah during the uh that was so we had one year of locked on which was the first the first year then the second year um yeah that was during the period when i fought um so so just like to, to better background yeah we've been running like amateur competitions at our gym i think since about 2018 or something like that yeah. so they're like amateur mma competitions just because there wasn't really anything like this running in the like around melbourne yeah. so it's basically like an opportunity for people who want to eventually fight in mma to come in and we it's like modified rules so people don't get punched in the head or kicked in the head there's no head strikes just body shots like it's still full contact but it's you know a lot, obviously a lot safer and then we just have it on the mats at the gym um and then the other like it was basically for people who want to get experience and then they move on to fighting in mma but also we just thought i'd be good that, sorry sorry to cut you off there then just real quick but that experience it's it's not just the experience of the fight, but it's the nerves. Yeah, and yeah. Like the walking out, people watching you. Yeah. And just looking into someone else's face. There's a lot more to it than actual throwing the shots, right? Just yeah. getting used to. Yeah, that's it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Because and I mean, the other thing as well is like it's good for coaches to see. Like it's good for coaches to see. I'm gonna bring this guy to the competition and see how he performs. Because he might shit his pants. Right? Yeah, he might. And I mean, that's that's the only thing as well. Like this is kind of off track a little bit, but that's something that I've always thought. Like, you see people who look really good in the gym, but yeah. until they actually fight, you don't really know. Like I've seen it so many times, and I've actually and I've seen the opposite as well. I've seen people who I've trained with, and I thought, oh, this guy's not that great. But then when you see him fight, it's like a different thing. And yeah, then you've yeah. seen people who look really good in the gym 
and they're you know they're able to beat everybody up and train in but as soon as it comes to fight time either they they pull out and make an excuse so they don't turn up or they get in there and they're not as good as yeah i remember my very first fight and i go go in and we do the weigh and i think again it was just like a part of a ritual i don't think like I don't yeah think it really mattered to be totally honest with you we were young i was really young and and I remember them saying that, oh, that Tim over there, and everyone said, <laughs> was like, "Oh, he's class. He's really good." I was like, "Whatever." F- I was a heavier kid, so I think I was like thirteen or fourteen, because he, he was like sixteen. He's like, "Oh, he's 16. And I'm like, and I was fucking terrified. Yeah, absolutely terrified. Until you get hit in the head, and it's, it, it, yeah, it's all right. Once you yeah. get hit, it's fine. Well, that's it. Yeah, like once once the match actually starts. I mean, obviously, as like it does come, different people perform differently under pressure, yeah. but it basically comes down to like what training have you done? Like if you've trained hard and you've trained against tough people, then when the fight starts, it's all going to come out. Yeah, Whereas yeah, if, yeah. if you haven't, you can look as tough as you want, but it's, it's like, you know, it's going to get exposed once the, yeah. the fight starts. But yeah. the mental side, even at the top level, the mental side is a big, a big part of it, right? Yeah. Like intimidation. You know, getting people angry, these these kind yeah. of things. Well, I like I actually reckon like probably at the top level it's all kind of mental really. It's yeah. all it's all the mentality. All yeah, because yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah. good athletes, everybody yeah. knows the same techniques. Yeah. It's like it just comes down and there's probably there's probably, you know, you could get you could get the you know all of the UFC champions and bring them to a gym and there's probably people in gyms that can you know, arm lock them all, and yeah, but they yeah, can't yeah. do it. They can't do it with like you know, hundred thousand people watching. Yeah, everyone chanting. Yeah, because that that's a real thing, right? That yeah, is, like there's one thing fighting in the gym. There's one thing fighting at your local thing. There's one thing fighting, but fighting on pay per view. Yeah, sat yeah. There and, like, and in the know, lead up to it, and then you've got yeah, like yeah. all the interviews and, and stuff like that. that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so that's the thing. It's like if you don't have the right mentality for that. It, it probably won't make much difference. Like you, you can probably be a little bit lacking in some other skills, but the mentality is like the big thing. And you see that in in like people like Adesanya would be a great example. Or, or look, I'm totally talking out of school, but what I feel like you can see is when you see people like Adesanya and Hooker, for instance, in 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 New Zealand, and then you see them bring on a couple. Of, like, and it happened in in. in, in SPG as well. Yeah. They bring on a couple of the other fighters from their gym get brought in through because yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, this guy's unbelievable, da, 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 fantastic, this, that, the other, and they just never. Nah, they, they don't never, get to never, the. They never do it really yeah. well because I think in the gym they are fantastic when they're surrounded by the mates and the fun yeah. and this and that and the other. But when it's in a hostile environment and the lights are on, yeah. No, and it's that's not a knock. I couldn't do nah. it either. That's not a knock on them. But I just think that's an example of where yeah. you actually see that happening. There was that that um, guy with the red stripe in his head from the from the New Zealand gym the other. Day. Remember him? He's been beat twice, I think. He looks a bit like Stylebender, but he's... he's the oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, know yeah, I mean? and he's, yeah. And he's, yeah. he's like, man, he, in the gym, and, well, I was that he's striking, he's unbelievable. Everyone says he's phenomenal, but I think, too, I think he's been beat twice. He just, yeah. He just can't... Yeah. Maybe well, I mean, that's an that, example of that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, that is, that is for sure, because, and I, I've heard of so many other people, and I mean, even like, I sort of think that I was a bit like that as well. Like, well, yeah. I couldn't, like, I wasn't that great in the gym. It's not like everybody was talking about me, yeah, but I was, yeah. you know... I was doing okay, but I never, but I, I always felt like that's the real challenge for me is like, can I, can I like get a, put in a performance in the fight as good as what I can, like when I'm just in my gym sparring? And do you feel like you never did? Nah, not really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the, but I mean, like, I think there's some people, yeah, you just can't really, you might never be able to get it. But then the only thing I sometimes think about is like, you know, if it maybe it's a de- maybe if I was actually forced to defend myself, then suddenly like that would fire up a different part. In, yeah, yeah. It, like, but um, yeah, like I think that's the real challenge. Like I mean, someone like the, the probably the best example is I always think about um, Michael Bisping. Yeah. Like he's someone who, when you look at him, he doesn't really look like he's doing anything special, but he's still able to perform at such a high level in all these big fights, and that's yeah. I, I once watched a documentary on YouTube where it broke down. It was like a psychoanalyst or, you know, that kind of person. I think we might have spoke about this before, and it, it was saying about how um, 
like people, I think it was about Conor McGregor was, in it, was, was the example they were using, and a serial killer. Yeah. Very similar mindsets where when the pressure is on at the highest level, they can just flick a switch. Yeah. And just be in this little zone in their own little world doing their own, like, they can just focus on that one thing with absolute craziness going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yeah. go, that doesn't matter. Yeah. This is what, this is you a don't take any notice of, yeah. like, what are people going to think? Or, or what, what are people thinking yeah. of me? Or what are people saying? Or what's that guy yeah. in the crowd saying? Or I always think someone, when they're, you know, when they're walking out and someone, like, I don't know, I've seen people get the hat stolen and, you know, different yeah. things like that. Like, that, that, like, that would that could knock you off like, yeah. like, easily, right? Or someone's going, you're a fucking dickhead and you're like, yeah. oh, am I? Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you're going to get your head, am I? Oh, well, maybe I am going to get, what the fuck, I want to go home. Do you know what I mean? But you've just got to like, zoom zone out. Yeah. It's, it's, anyway, go back to the show. So you, you got your, the COVID thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so that we, we, we were running, um, or kind of amateur events at the gym for yeah. the last couple of years. I actually got another one coming up this Saturday, oh. the, this Saturday afternoon. So they, I mean, at first, when we first did those, they seemed like a big thing as well. And I put all this work into it, but now because we've done so many of them, I think we've probably done like 25 or yeah. something of those already. So no, they're pretty straightforward. And I'd say there's a lot of fighters who are now fighting on the local scene around Australia who like started off on those shows as well. So it's good that that's the kind of pathway that, that, that people are going. Cry, yeah, 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 it's good because I sure. think it's like, you know, like one of the problems with MMA was always it's, um, and you've probably seen the same with boxing as well, where sometimes people are getting set up like they're going in they're having their first fight and they're getting knocked out because there's no real yeah yeah, yeah, there's no real you know place where you can people can gain experience and then and that's the way it kind of was with mma so this has been a good pathway for like a lot of people get experience get some matches we've actually had a few of the guys who I don't know if we've had anybody who fought each other on our in-house show and then fought on the Bushido fight night as well, but we've de- we've had a lot of guys who fought on the the in-house show and then they've gone on to Bushido fight night. Nice. But yeah, basically during the lockdown, obviously had like a lot of free time in my hands, and I think I think we'd always kind of thought about oh maybe one day we'll do like a bigger event as well. Yeah. And then that's you know had time to plan it, um, and. I think we scheduled the date for the first one was in um, November of whatever year that was, 2021, that must have been. And we actually thought that the lockdowns would still be happening and we'd have to have the, sh- have the show without any spectators. But as it turned out, the lockdowns finished a few weeks before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, a lot of... Um, it was, it was difficult planning it because most of the gyms were shut as well. So yeah, people... Yeah. It, it was difficult to find enough fighters. But mm-hmm. I think... Mostly, we had a lot of people from regional Victoria, and they were still able to train. And then we had like a few guys that were, you know, like brawlers that were training with each other and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So yeah, what well, you were you were at the very first one, yeah, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some ripper fights. Yeah, that, it there was, was really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think because it was, it must have been maybe that was the first show right after the lockdowns as well. So everybody was, it was pumping on it. Yeah, everybody it was, was like. Um, had been in, inside for too long. They wanted yeah. to get out and see some fights. Yeah. And then also because it's in such a good location as well, yeah, the Formby uh, Theatre. Formby Thornbury. Thornbury Theatre. So it's a yeah. great location. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's, I think the show, and the shows that you put on, Bushido Fight Night, right? Yep, yeah, that's Bushido it. Fight Night. They, um, like, it's no expense spared, man. Like, the screens. Yeah. You know, like the, the music, the smoke, the, like, the, the smoke machine, like, the, the uh, entertainment, referee, obviously referees, yeah, yeah. medical staff, commentators, video, like proper video. It's like all legit, right? It's yeah. Like, it's, it's just cool. It's, for a local event, it's, you know, and look, bag me if you want, but for a local event ran by, you know, like you feel safe when you're there. Yeah. There's no... You know, there's no people that maybe could intimidate you. Yeah, or, yeah. You know I mean, I've been yeah. ones, other ones, which I wouldn't, I won't mention, where there's been people getting jumped on, yeah, and like real yeah. bad brawls and stuff, and you just like, yeah. if you're there for the sport. Yeah, well, then, I mean, that that's kind of one of the things I wanted to do is like more. You know, I think I feel like one of the problems with MMA, which is obviously it is a part of it, is like it's a violent sport, but I wanted to kind of show like. 
obviously there's going to be people are going to be getting punched and kicked and there's going to be chokes and whatever and take downs but it's not all about the violence it's like this is this is like martial arts Definitely. side of it and it's and then more two guys want to do that yeah yeah that's the thing and, about the, it, and right? there's like respect yeah, as well yeah and they'll start when the bell starts and when the bell finishes they'll stop and they'll pick each other up and they'll dust each other up and they'll be like thanks for that and thanks for the time thanks yeah. for the rounds and thanks for giving me the opportunity do you know what I mean yeah, and, yeah. and be grateful to one and each other and respect each other and win or lose or whatever it might be and I think the crowd as well is it, it, like that and I don't know I just think I'm, I'm also a big fan of it, it I think MMA and, and, and combat sports or whatever has really helped me in my life so yeah. I'm also a big promoter when I, don't, I want to go there and I want to see good fights friendly fights obviously violent fights and chaos if you can or arm bars or whatever but people respect each other. Yeah, and I don't want yeah. to be worried about getting bashed in the crowd nah. or whatever, right? Yeah. Even someone who does combat sports, the last thing I ever want to do is get any sort of violence out on the street. Like, that's yeah. a nightmare. Yeah, right? and like I think, yeah, nightmare. I think that, and I mean, the problem is like, if it's, if you are emphasizing that kind of violence out of it, it does, I mean, do, you know, for our show, because this is the, the, um, the regulations and, um, in Victoria and in Melbourne is like, we have to have security, security has to have metal Stand detectors yeah, yeah. and they have to, but I mean, we haven't had any, tr like we've done five shows, there's never been any trouble. Never. There's there's like the, all the coaches and teams are very respectful to each other. Like the, the guys can fight each other and then they're downstairs like chatting to each other, like That's what it straight be, off right? the, yeah. And I mean, so I mean, obviously you still need to have the, the um, security and stuff because you never know when something could go wrong in the yeah. crowd but it's yeah i think it's like it definitely doesn't have the atmosphere of like ah oh, this is just violence and you know yeah, it's, it's gonna night. kick off any minute night. yeah and you're supporting local fighters and supporting i think like honestly i i, I think it's fantastic yeah yeah i mean yeah we've been really happy with, with how it's gone and I, like i think you know the, the only thing is i mean the problem with it is it's a lot of work and what i didn't realize is um when I did the first one, obviously it was during the lockdown, so I didn't have too much else to do. Yeah. But then for the then we did the next show then, like, I don't know, four or five months afterwards, but by then the gym was open again. Jeez. So I was like, ah, all the, you know, the, I, I actually thought that I want to do the first show, it'll be easy, because then once you know how to and do it, place. but it, it hasn't got any easier. Oh, hasn't it? I assume that as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, yeah, for, for whatever reason, like, I don't know how, how that's possible, but it seems like it's got more work <laughs> as it's gone on. It's got more work, and then you've got less time to do it, because you've got all this stuff to do, and yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's, that's the only downside of it. But I mean, in terms of, I think, like, the events have been really good, and the, uh, I, like, I feel it's been a good contribution to the local scene like there's a lot fact. of guys who's um who fought on it and you know now they're doing well with their fight careers and stuff so and that experience is priceless for them like we've said all the way along if you if for these guys who do want to get into the pro scene how else are they going to get the yeah to go to bellator one fc yeah UFC, yeah well i mean like if that. i and i mean i just think as well i try to make it a good experience for the fighters as well like obviously it's good for the fans and the stuff as well but i try to make a good experience for the fighters because you know going back to you know my fight career i always think it, it wasn't really that the experience that i had wasn't really that good because i was kind of like you know getting matched for fights and then me and my mates would like rent a car and drive up to like you know the it, to your area for, yeah, like yeah. there seemed to be a lot of fights up there we would just turn up there and it would be like in some you know dirty old warehouse and the guys say you fighting him and you come back at five o'clock and then you'd come back and like, like you don't know what's gonna happen you put on your gloves <laughs> he doesn't look like the guy that I, yeah, you pointed out he's yeah. just his big brother but it, it was like i mean I would, I would say for most of my fights, I'd say it was a pretty scary experience. Like mm. even though I, I did okay and I won most of them, um, but it was like, oh, this is quite, quite frightening. I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> if, but then, even if I win, I might Yeah, get even if you win. Yeah. And I like, didn't get you know, yeah. any money or anything for them. But like, look, you, I just, oh, I'll try to finish the fight and then we get back in the car <laughs> and drive back to London as quick as we could. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah looking, I, it was a good experience because I wanted to test myself and all that. But I'd say it definitely didn't make me think, oh, this is a good long-term career sort of yeah. path back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Australian and New Zealand MMA has exploded over the last couple of years. Obviously, Adesanya, Volkanovski, well, Alex Volkanovski, Bam Bam, yeah. uh, Hooker. And then even 
I think it's Jack De- Della Jack Della Malala. Yeah, so yeah, Ma- yeah, over da- in Perth. Yeah, yeah. Jack Della yeah. Malala, I think it's called. And then I know she got beat at the weekend, Casey O'Neill. She got, yeah. she got beat, but you know she's coming off the injury and all the rest of it, so whatever. And then Jack Jenks, Jenkins. Have Jenkins, you seen him? yeah, he looks yeah. As well. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a massive. It's growing, and Aussies love a, love a scrap, right? Yeah. And are you seeing that in the gym? Are you seeing more people coming through? And do you feel like there's a bit more? It's growing in this this neck of the woods. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely growing. Because um, when I first came to Melbourne, actually, there, like it seemed like there was no MMA at all. Like there was no, um, yeah, there was, there was like MMA gyms. But they only t- they they only taught jujitsu. Yeah. So when we started our gym, like and it was a re- not it's called AXA, but it was originally called Team Nemesis MMA. So we were kind of thinking, oh, we're just going to do MMA and nothing else because there isn't really any other MMA. Like, doesn't seem like there's many active MMA fighters around. And that yeah. was that was when I was still fighting as well. Like when I was. Oh, did you start the gym when you were still fighting? Yeah, yeah. So right. I I was still. But I wasn't able to have any fights in Melbourne because they were so, because they weren't allowed to have a cage in Melbourne back then. I remember. But then well, there were still one or two. I had my very last that's MMA fight. Actually, the casing, isn't yeah, it? so that's probably I don't know, like ten years yeah, ago yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But um, I had my last fight in Melbourne, but it was in a ring. Um, but MMA yeah, the w- take downs. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was just I like oh, normal, yeah, normal MMA fight, but yeah, just in a ring instead of a cage. Yeah. But um, yeah, like. My older fights, for one, I went to New Zealand, I went to Perth, I went to yeah. Sydney for, for all the older fights because the MMA scene kind of didn't exist. Um, or, or, like, I think it had existed maybe just a few years before I got here, yeah. and then it started building up again afterwards. Okay. But yeah, like now it's... But I, I mean, the only thing is, I'd say all around the world, it's just got, it's just yeah. got so much bigger, yeah. Because yeah. I mean... Even when I was when I was back in the UK, when I was kind of in the early stages of my training, it seemed that um, the only places like if you wanted to be a successful MMA fighter, if you weren't from uh, America, Brazil, Russia, or Japan, it's kind of like a waste of time. You're just there to make up the numbers. Like those, <laughs> those four countries like dominated. Yeah. And and now kind of Japan's completely fallen off. Like they don't seem to have any interest in it anymore. But like well, the pride old, was Japan. Yeah, yeah, pride yeah. and then there was like Shudo, which oh, Shudo, like was yeah, the yeah, dominated yeah. all like yeah. the lower the lower weights. But um yeah, it was because I actually remember, I don't know who it was, but there was a guy who was like probably one of the best fighters in the UK at that time, like the same kind of era as like, you know, before Dan Hardy and Paul Daly and those guys went to the UFC. Yeah. But he went to Japan and he didn't get submitted until the second round. And everybody's like, oh, this shows how, you know, this shows how far we've come. Like, he can make it into <laughs> oh, the second round. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. So that was like, yeah, I think the rest of the world was, was far behind. But now everywhere is kind of caught up. So, yeah. I, I guess, as well here, a lot of fight, well, everywhere, I guess, in the world. You know, the Brazilians come and the, you know, the yeah. Thais come and, the, and then they all, you know, and then they'll start a little crew and... Yeah. And well, I, mean, I just think, like, it's, it's always, like, once once the knowledge kind of gets shared around, mm. then everybody can... Like, people can just watch the fights and see, ah, that's what works and this is what doesn't work. Yeah, so people yeah, will... Yeah. It's it just, there, it, Yeah, see. it just takes time and mm. people figure it out. And have, you done a, have you done a training camp in Thailand? Yeah, I've been I've been to train in Thailand my, two different times. That's yeah, my, like, it's on my bucket list. I yeah, even just for a couple of weeks. I've so. never I never did MMA. Actually, the two times no MMA seems to be really popular there. But like, but the times I went there was kind of before MMA Thai had taken off. Yeah, so it was just yeah Muay Thai over yeah. there. Yeah, was it good? Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. And then what, we're nearly there. But what I was gonna say is you you do quite a lot of. Um, what do you call them, like, um, expedition, not expedition, what do they call when you get, like, a fighter down, or... Oh, like, go, seminars, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah, seminars, yeah. seminars, yeah. You do a fair few of them, you, and you've had some big fighters right down here. Yeah, I mean, we haven't, we ha- we ha- actually had one a couple of weeks ago, um, we had, we, we went through a phase of doing heaps of them, and then I've, I've kind of, like, I think ever since the lockdowns, I suppose there wasn't as many people traveling through yeah. and stuff, so it kind of died off a little bit, but, um... Yeah, we just had a guy. Uh, we had Sanji Ribeiro, who's like was like one of the the top BJJ champions from a few years ago. He was down a couple of weeks ago. How but was yeah, that? Yeah, that was really good. Did was, you get to roll with him? 
Nah, I didn't actually. Nah. I mean, but I mean, you he did roll with a few people at the end, like just to kind of show like yeah. one of the kind of concepts that he is that he was kind of demonstrating. But I mean, it's more just I just I I do a lot of seminars just to see different people's ways of explaining stuff. Yeah, nice. you know, even if even if it's not something that I've. Um, or, or maybe like even if it's a technique that I sort of already know but just seeing ah, oh, like this guy explains it like this because that, that's what I've always found like I can have I can explain something to a whole bunch of guys in a room and then 10 of them get it and then the other 10 are like scratching their head <laughs> yeah. and you think but what you know I've explained it like what's wrong that's and then, me I'm the guy scratching his head yeah, seriously and, but then you just have to like then you see someone else explaining the same thing go ah oh, that's why I, I should have yeah. said this instead of this or, I, or it's, I think most of the time it usually comes down to what you don't say because I usually give too much information and then that Can't distracts people. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm like that in learning everything. Like, you, you know, when I'm different, I'm like, just tell me a little bit and I'll just let me master that a little bit. And that might literally be like, you know, move the leg, push the hip and, sw- you know, whatever. That's yeah. all I need to know. That's it. I don't need yeah. to know the next... Do you know what I mean? I'll just... let me Give me a couple of weeks of just doing that and yeah. then give me the next bit and... It's just where I, I Yeah, and I think, you know, people have got different learning styles as well. So yeah. some people need a lot of words to yeah, yeah, think yeah, about, yeah. whereas other people just need to see it. And then other people, you need to go around and actually, like you, I'll say, move your right arm here, move your left leg there, and it'll be like, <laughs> and then you actually go over and move their hand and they go, ah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. I think you have to, the, the longer that you that, that I've been coaching, the more I figure out like, mm-hmm. The be- there's a best way to teach every single person and it's not it's not always the same for everyone that's great so where can everyone find you where's the gym where can they find you on socials and, 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 and the and the Bushido fight night and whatnot okay so the gym is at 32, uh, 325A Darabin Road in um, Formbury so just on the edge of Formbury and Fairfield so it's Australian Combat Sports Academy yeah. so if anybody wants to to get started in um like Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, MMA. We also do like a bit of boxing as well. So yeah, come along and check that out. Yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, yeah, physio. you've you've done some training with Quan yeah, as well. Yeah, so. my wife as well. My wife goes ah, to see okay. Quan as well yeah, for yeah. physio and things. Ah, okay, so I didn't we, even realize yeah, that. Yeah, we, ah. we both got him. He's yeah. he's really good. So yeah, you've got physio in house. You've got strength and conditioning. Yeah. You've got the ring, you've got a yeah, ring, the yeah. cage. So we've got the the ring and with the cage is actually the official cage from Bushido Fight Night as well. Oh, is so that the cage? you is get it? to train in that cage and then one day fight in it yeah, at Formbury yeah. Theatre. You've got the big mats and Yeah. Like I I'm not just saying it because you're here or whatever, but it really I, like I love amazing guy. Yeah, really? so Phil's my business partner yeah. at the gym. Yeah. And he does a lot of the striking. Yeah, so he boxing. so he pretty much covers all of the uh I still teach a little bit of striking just for the people who are doing MMA, but he covers all of the Muay Thai um side of it. He looks yeah. like he's lost a lot of weight actually. Yeah, well he's just he, yeah, he was in um, Thailand and he's oh, actually that was over Christmas and then there's a bunch of them going back over there now at Easter as well so they've all been trying hard for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And is it super friendly? Everyone's really nice. It's, you know, uh, yeah, people, if, if, if you have got that little thing in your head, like, should I, oh, I'm a bit nervous, da, da, I would just recommend going down and doing a session. You can, you can do a session, do one session, have a feel of it, right? Yeah, yeah, like, I, I, try, I mean, I think our, our place probably is pretty friendly. Um, I mean, I always think that most gyms really, like, I think if it's a good, if it's a good, um, you know, like if it's a pretty high level and people know what they're doing, it probably will be friendly. So yeah. I'd say like, you know, if, if you're not in the area, go, you, you know, and you want to get into martial arts or whatever, go check out, uh, you know, go and check out any martial arts gym. Um, I'd say that usually when people aren't very friendly, it's usually like because they're a bit insecure and that probably means that the level of the training there probably isn't going to be that good anyway. So I think, yeah, like yeah. You could, that most of the, I've been to like a lot of really good gyms all around the world. Like I've trained in Brazil, Japan, um, America, like a lot of different places and like nearly everywhere I've, and obviously like I'm trying to go to the best places. So I'm trying to like um, the best place I could go to. But when you go to these gyms with like, and Amsterdam as well, like for Dutch kickboxing kickboxing. style, yeah. Yeah. Roman Decker. Yeah, well, I never actually trained with him, but I trained with like Ernesto Houston. But but like, yeah, when you go to these places that have got the high level people, everybody's friendly because they're not really, 
you know, they're, they're, they don't have to prove any points. They've already proven everything that they need to prove in the ring and in the cage and whatever. So, and like... The, at the end of the day, a lot of these places are so anti-bully. Yeah. It's unbelievable, right? They, 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 that, that's what a lot of people are going because they've been bullied or... Yeah, yeah. It's so anti-bullied. So, if you were to go in with less skills and someone was to, like, pick on you or bash you or be... Whatever, and there's fighters known for that that have been outed as well yeah. in, 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 the, in, the, in the MMA world. Then everyone will be looking at them going, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you yeah. doing to that guy, right? You, you, you can see you've got more skills. You can see you're bigger, stronger. You can see you've got more experience. What are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? People, the, the gym yeah. wouldn't accept it. Nah, I don't think, yeah. I, I think it's, I mean, like this is something that used to happen. Like it's not quite the same as bullying. But I feel like in the early days of jiu-jitsu, there was like a bit of a culture of whenever someone comes in, because, you know, jiu-jitsu wasn't so well known or whatever. Yeah. So if someone comes in and they've already done some other kind of martial art, like maybe a guy who's done taekwondo comes into the jiu-jitsu gym, we got to roll with him and tap him out like 25 times to show him how good jiu-jitsu is. Yeah. Um, but that's not like that anymore. It's, yeah, it's not like that anymore. And, and, and I mean... Like it, I think it probably worked back in those days as well because jujitsu was such a small thing that probably the taekwondo guy was convinced. And he thought, oh yeah, this is good. I better start training here. Yeah, yeah. But like now, it's kind of got the stage where everybody knows what it is. Like yeah. when someone comes in, you don't really feel the need to prove anything to them because you think, oh well, if you've found the website and you've come in and you've signed up for the trial, you must already know what yeah, yeah, what's yeah. involved. So, and like you said before, I, I've always found that people just want to help you and show yeah, you and yeah. bring you on, right? Chloe, um, Chloe's husband here, our partner here, is a blue belt and competes. Ah, okay. I'm not sure what Jimmy's fight, he, he fights out of that. Jimmy, I'll ask, I'll ask yeah, yeah. Ah, out. okay. Um, nah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, it is becoming such a, like, it's it's just becoming such a big thing now. It's like, yeah. And then, obviously, Bushido fight now. How can people... Where, like, do you release the dates? If they follow you, follow the gym. What's well, yeah, we've actually. It, um, if you just keep an eye on the, uh, we've got like the Bushido night, uh, Bushido fight night Facebook page. We've got Bushido fight night Instagram. We've also got um, the, our, our shows have been shown on Channel Thirty One in Melbourne locally as well. That's um, yeah, and then we, um, yeah, as I said, we've got our next small event this Saturday. Uh, and yeah, we haven't announced the date for the next one. Are but you gonna do another? You will do another one. Yeah, yeah, we'll do. We'll definitely do it. I mean, I like as I said, it's a lot of work, and yeah. it, we it, sometimes what it feels like is as soon as you finish one, then you have Sorry. to start doing the next one. So I I'll probably try to spread them out a bit more. Yeah, and so many it can dilute the product. Yeah, as well. yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm not telling you what you should do, but I reckon you know. Two a year, three. Yeah, years, three yeah, years, yeah. Well, I mean, we've been doing we've been doing three a year, but I, I'm Two sort of yeah, I'm sort of thinking like maybe, like, yeah, it it, it does it kind of gets to the point where as soon as one's finished, the next one's coming Definitely. up, and then the other side of it, then I've got you know like we're you know running the classes, and we've got older people who are fighting on older shows, so we've got to try to synchronize yeah, it with yeah, that yeah. as well. So it's yeah, no. but we'll yeah we'll definitely announce the date for the next one before well, too there. long. I'll definitely yeah. be there. So let me know. I'll look, you know I'll get involved where I can. Yeah, all right. So. That'd be good to have I you back there again. It. Well, thank you very much. All right, Dennis, thanks, thanks a lot. For your, your time and yeah. Thanks for having me on here.